I made a discovery this week. I'm super excited to share it with you guys. I've been flipping furniture for some time now and I had never thought to remove the front part of the base. I've taken off like a lot of bases. I have never thought to just remove that front part and look how good those legs look. I didn't have to build anything or buy any wood. All I did was take off the front layer of the dresser's footing or, you know, base. And I can't promise that every old dresser is like this. This was a fairly nice dresser made of mostly solid wood. And when I tipped it over to take, I was going to take the base completely off. When I looked at it a little closer, I was like, there are two layers here, you know, and I could just choose to take off the outer layer. So you have to be careful which screws you're unscrewing because some will unscrew the whole base and others will just unscrew the front decorative pieces. This is the Famo wood that came highly recommended from one of my previous videos. You guys um, commented Famo wood, uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right, a lot in the comments. And I actually heard you guys recommend a lot of other wood fillers too. And I'm going to try them all out eventually. This one is stainable though. So in case, like I said, I want to stain this wood, I can. I still think I'm about the world's worst wood filler or hole filler there is. I don't know why, even when I go back and do a second um, time with the wood filler and sand in between, I just can't seem to get it. But I really want to get better at filling holes with wood filler. And you guys left a ton of really awesome comments in one of my last videos, like stellar recommendations on products and methods. And so I'm going to test out all of those in an upcoming video and do like a battle of the wood fillers and fill some holes. This is a drawer slide that a lot of people struggle with, and so I wanted to show it here. It's a metal slide, but it has plastic edges there. I've done a video on drawer slides, and this was one of the drawer slides that people struggle with the most. And so it's always nice to examine when a drawer is working properly, take that drawer out and examine it and, and get a good look at why that drawer is, the pieces, take pictures of it. Because when you get a dresser on, later on down the road that doesn't work properly, you can go, okay, I had this dresser before, and these were all the pieces that were on it and it worked properly. I did do a little, because I knew I was gonna sand these drawers down completely, I did a little test spot with my paint. And you guys, I've been raving about this paint, and I don't care what paint you guys use, but I'm gonna be using this stuff. This is with no primer and no sanding on my dresser. And look, it scratches, like the finish gets scratched, but it doesn't peel. I know many of you have been like, oh my gosh, you're, you gotta prime, and your paint's gonna peel. I'm telling you, this HGTV stuff that they're making and maybe the other paints are, are going this way as well, it does not peel. It is different than latex paint from the 90s.
This didn't take me long at all to sand these two drawers and then I'm gonna do two more. Something to look for when you're trying to find out if the drawer is solid wood is you can open the drawer and then look on the back and see how it's solid wood on the back as well. That's one way that you can check it out. And another great way to check if your dresser is solid wood is to just pull it around, look at the back, you can tell right away that this is particle board by that crumpled up texture. It looks kind of like oatmeal or glued together sawdust. These sides are solid wood and on the back is MDF, which is just a higher quality particle board, but nevertheless, it's not sandable wood. Now, a lot of times these types of furniture that have the MDF or the particle board will have a solid wood veneer on top that you can sand and stain and, and do all that kind of stuff too. But you really have to test it out and see. I can tell right away when I look at something if it's plastic or if it's real wood, but that takes a little bit of practice. Now I, like many furniture refinishers, used to use 220 grit sandpaper or sanding sponges r religiously, but I noticed that with my black finishes that you could still see some of the lines left by those 220 grit sanding papers, especially if they were new. So I switched over to 400 grit and I've never looked back. They give me the same adhesion when I sand, they give me the smoothest possible finish and I don't see any of those lines in my black dark finishes, even with a super shiny top coat. 400 grit sandpaper is my absolute favorite right now for sanding in between paint coats. If I notice some debris in my finish or if I've got a rough patch where the paint dried too quickly while I was rolling. But other than that, I don't really sand the entire piece. I just sand spots that need it or if a spot is super shiny. I feel confident doing that because I've done the scratch test with this paint on these particular types of wood. And so I feel super confident with this paint and my methods, but you wanna test if you're using different paint, I can't vouch for that. So, you know, you need to do your own scratch test first. A great way to do it is just take the paint that you were planning on using, go out and just paint like, you know, a quarter of the drawer like I had early in this video, and then do a scratch test a few days later.
So here I am with my paint du jour. This is my current favorite. It's the Ovation Plus. I find this paint at Lowe's. I know it says Sherwin-Williams on it, but I don't think you can get it at the Sherwin-Williams store. I find it at Lowe's and it's less than $20 by the time I pay taxes and check out. I can get it in any color that Sherwin-Williams has. It's usually pretty quick in and out. I can get the paint and that's also the same place when I go to Lowe's that I'm buying my rollers now, which is so funny because I was literally like a diehard Home Depot girl and I was loving bear paint, but ah, man, I just, this paint sticks better. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm bear is a little bit cheaper, so I'll, I'll always love Bear, especially I'll use it in my one-step paint recipe and stuff. I don't mean to be a trader on Bear, but this Ovation stuff has really been a game changer for me. And I hope that you guys will at least give it a try one time because what do you got to lose? It's so affordable. I'm using the 2.5 inch angled synthetic brush. I usually use Zebra or something along those lines. And I will go over the edges with the brush, get it on there, smooth it out and then with the roller the high density foam roller from Wiz it's the white roller that I buy um, I'm sure any high density foam roller from Wiz would do great but I do find that the Wiz brand is superior and I've used a lot of the different foam rollers although I'm looking for an Amazon alternative because don't always have a Lowe's nearby maybe or something um, and you want to order it online so I'm up for suggestions. If you guys have used a foam roller on Amazon and you thought it was great, let me know. I go from one end of the piece to the other while the paint is wet, working my way up. I'll usually go over it two times, once up and then once down with the foam roller. So get the paint on there with the brush. It really does help when you're working on a black piece to not use old paint really try and get new paint if you can because it just goes on so much smoother. If you find that you're having a lot of trouble with streaks in your finish, you want to make sure that you have new paint and clear coat. While I'm painting the drawer fronts, I do like to work with a vertical surface. So I like the drawers to be in the dresser while I paint the fronts of the drawers because it risks less debris falling in my finish. And I work out in the garage. I don't have like a like dust free environment, you know, like there is debris falling <laughs> in the air. And this is where I hold my brush <laughs> while I'm rolling. <laughs>
So when I paint the sides, I like to go around the edges a lot like a cabinet refinisher would paint a cabinet door. Go around the edges and then fill in the middle. Now, I love to do the paint it on with the paintbrush and then roll off with the foam roller method. It's kind of like a reverse method of the layoff method, if you've heard of that before, where people will roll on the paint with a roller and then they'll use the brush to smooth it out. A lot of people who refinish, um, well, who paint um, interior doors do it that way. And I don't know if you guys know this, but my dad is has been a carpenter his whole life and has done so many, you know, from cabinetry to interior woodwork to everything in between. And um, he's been a great resource for information. Of course, he wants me to stain everything mahogany. <laughs> like he just loves that like red wood. So I think it breaks his heart a little bit when I paint it, but... I love the trends just as much as my buyers do and black furniture is trending right now and people are loving it so that's what I do. The great thing about paint is it is removable so if anybody ever wants to take it off they surely can. The method here though with the roller is to go up and down up and down while the paint is still wet. You do have to work kind of quickly to make this happen and then you just want to leave it. I have a tendency to try to rework it and go over it one more time but that has burned me more times than I'd like to admit the the perfect thing to do is to roll it one time maybe two and then leave it the idea is that you're only rolling when the paint is wet and that when it starts to dry you are long gone (laughs) Because if it starts to dry while you're still rolling, you're going to have so many streaks and flashing and it's just going to be bad news. I did take the drawers out to work on the back part, but again, when I go for my second coat on the drawer fronts, I'm definitely going to have the drawers in and be working vertically. So I'm just using my hand painting and this is just an artist brush that I got from Walmart. I think it's about, what is it, like a little less than an inch big? Like I said, these drawers wouldn't like stand up on their own and I was having trouble holding it and painting it so I brought it out here and like leaned it up against the table the outdoor table and a chair that seemed to work you don't have to panic if you get some paint on the edges you'll see me I mess up a bunch and then I just go back and sand it I mean try not to get paint on there if you can but Obviously, I didn't want to sand in all those nooks and crannies and expose all that raw wood. Even though that would have been beautiful, it would have taken me way more time than a client would be willing to pay for, I guess is a good way to put it. So, and this works great. Like, you still get to see the exposed wood on the flat surface, and I didn't have to sand in all those little nooks and crannies. A lot of you guys have asked how I wash my stuff or if I reuse the sponges, um, the sponge rollers. I definitely reuse them a ton. 
I do inspect them and make sure there aren't any like gouges in them like missing pieces of the sponge because that would show up in the finish and I kind of have like a black only sponge and like a whites only sponge and a clear coat only sponge if you can if you can do that 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 works the best because then you don't have to worry about any cross contamination but I just use dish soap and water this paint is water based and easily cleaned up with water but you know how you can tell it's a good paint I can always tell it's a good paint when it sticks on my nails for a few days I'm like oh that's a good paint you know it really it adhered to my shiny little fake nails and stuck on there for a few days I had to like scrub it to get it off so that's always a good sign that your paint or your primer is good or like see how it stayed on my hand that's a good sign it didn't just wash right off and then you got that trickaroo where you spin the brush between your palms of your hands that's like a contractor special there <laughs> works really well for getting the brush all dried out and then just go back with the sanding sponge around the edges any spots where you might have gotten paint on I'm gonna have to go back and do a second coat on this of course but I go ahead and sand in between I'm just amazed at how beautiful that wood is I think it's so pretty just raw like it is I think all I'm gonna do is seal it with wax Now, I was a little torn on which handles to use because I had these handles that fit perfectly the holes, but I felt like it was a little bit too like black and white, black and white. And then I had these that once I put wax on the drawers, like it'll match perfectly. And ultimately, you'll see what I go with. Breaking out my little popsicle stick tool again. It's one of the larger popsicle sticks. And I am going to have to drill, womp womp, but I don't have to do any filling because the way the handles are designed, they cover up the holes. And so that saved me a little bit of time. And time is money. I hated drilling through that wood. It was so beautiful. I did not want to do that, but there was just no, those other handles look cheap. I'm going with the clear, bare decorative finishes wax I find this at Home Depot but you could go with any clear wax would work great or you guys can use a polycrylic water-based polycrylic to top coat this or use oil based whatever whatever clear coat you want I just went with wax because it was easy I'm finding that this paint is actually pretty durable without a clear coat once it cures and so <laughs> I'm going to do a formal scratch test before I like sell a piece without clear coating it. But I'm thinking based on what I've been seeing with this um, paint here, it's I don't think you're going to I don't think you need to clear coat it all the time. Here I am cutting some of the cane that I bought on Amazon for another project that I haven't gotten around to. But I thought it might look cute on the dresser in that little spot. 
but I'm just, like I said, I just tacked it on with a nail because I wasn't sure. I didn't really want to commit to it. What do you guys think? Should I leave it on there? Should I glue it? Oh, wait. I have to show you guys the before, before I give you guys the full reveal. Here is the before, and ta-da! This is the after. I just love it. I think it's so cool. It'll definitely sell really quickly, and I think those handles were perfect on the drawers. I wouldn't change a thing about this project. Super happy with how it turned out. Like I said, I'm in love with that paint, guys. You need to get some. And I'm not sponsored or anything. It just I just want to share the goodness. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.